Ladies and gentlemen, joining me now is the ambassador of Israel to India, a great friend of India, Dr. Ran Malka, who I've had the pleasure of knowing personally as well. Dr. Malka, let me begin by telling you that I can't tell you the level of support for you. Yesterday, we were reporting this live about what happened outside the Israel embassy. And thousands of people calling in live during the program saying, please tell everyone in the Israel embassy that we are the greatest friends of the great country of Israel, that we are proud of our partnership, and that these kind of incidents will only bring our partnership stronger, make our partnership stronger. So I wanted to begin by sharing that with you before I ask my first question, um, Dr. Malka. Thank you so much, Anna, for your kind and warm words. And please convey our appreciation uh, to all the audience, those that send those messages, I get them from all over. It's so heartwarming and we feel so comfortable and so good here with uh, our Indian brothers and uh, friends. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Malka. I, I, I remember that after the Pulwama attack, you were one of the first diplomats who gave a very, very strong message saying that Israel and India will come together even more. We read out that message yesterday and people really appreciated it. First of all, Dr. Malka, I hope you and everyone is doing fine. What's the atmosphere in the Israel embassy right now among all your staff and all your colleagues? Well, fortunately, nobody is hurt. All our staff and their families are well safe and the spirit is good. We're in a good spirit. Uh, we Israelis uh, know a uh, new uh, the, events in the past, it's not the first time. As diplomats uh, around the world, we know that we are targets for our enemies. There were some events, some uh, uh, attacks uh, in the past, in the history, so uh, we are very well prepared, alert. Uh, we have good protection and uh, the spirit is high. How has the investigation proceeded so far? Uh, have you, you know, we understand some CCTV footage was got near the Israel embassy by the special cell of the Delhi police, and they revealed that a cab had dropped two persons who walked to the spot near the embassy. Have you watched the CCTV footage? What have the findings been so far that you can share? Well, the, as you mentioned, the investigation is uh, unfolding. We are collecting every piece of uh, information and evidence and uh, eyewitnesses uh, from the scene and information from other sources. Uh, taking and putting all the pieces together, trying to create the picture, the puzzle, and we are advancing in that. Uh, as of now, uh, our strong assumption that uh, it is uh, indeed a terror attack targeted uh, against the Israeli uh, embassy in New Delhi. So this is a strong assumption that we have now. And uh, now we are trying to understand who is standing behind uh, this uh, evil attack and uh, hopefully we'll uh, find out and uh, bring them to justice. Uh, Dr. Malka, do you consider the timing significant? Yesterday was the 29th anniversary of our historic relationships between our two great countries. Do you think they were trying to send a message? Well, it seems uh, to have this attack exactly at the day that we celebrate the thriving, uh, steadily growing and rapidly growing relations between Israel and India that has been for 29 years so fruitful and so rewarding. Uh, of course, we have to uh, also analyze and uh, uh, take into consideration that it's not a coincidence. Uh, yes, of course, this is one of uh, the direction of the investigation, but uh, we can assure everyone that uh, not this and uh, any other uh, frightened attack uh, will deter us or will scare us uh, of course, we will continue uh, to expand and to deepen the relations, the strong relations between Israel and India. And especially in these times and these uh, special events, the strong and warm friendship between Israel and India reflects itself. From yesterday, we get you know phone calls from all the Indian officials uh, supporting, uh, offering their assistance. The Minister of External Affairs, Dr. Jan Schenker, called immediately after the attack, our foreign minister, uh, the foreign secretary, uh, the NSA, called the, uh, our NSA, of course, uh, offered their support and assistance and assurances 
that India is going to do whatever it takes to protect the Israeli representatives here on Indian soil and of course to conduct very efficiently to conclude the investigation and uh, to bring uh, those that uh, uh, did uh, this, uh, I'd say, uh, evil attack to justice. Um, I know you can't reveal much at this stage, Dr. Malka, but there have been some reports that there was a letter found. There was an envelope addressed to you, Israel Embassy Ambassador, and they made references to, to, uh, to Qasem Soleimani and, uh, and two Iranians. And this was uh, apparently it says that this is an explosion is a trailer. Uh, if it is possible, can you confirm or deny that? I mean, have you also got any such information? Is there an Iranian hand in this? Well, uh, Arnab, as you mentioned, uh, uh, the investigation is it's in early stages. So it will be not appropriate. It might hurt the investigation to, just you know, to talk about specific details at that stage. Uh, all the options are still there. We are, you know, many, some directions we didn't cancel yet any option. Of course, there have been, as you mentioned, some uh, 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 events and uh, uh, that, uh, you know, assassinations, as you mentioned, uh, Soleimani and uh, Fahrizada and uh, other uh, uh, operations that were around the world that uh, refer to Israel. There are some that refer to Israel and blame Israel for that. There have been some threat that has been thrown to the air against Israel and uh, Israel facilities in the world. So we are not surprised. We are very well prepared and nobody surprised us with this uh, air attack. And as I said, it's going, not going to scare us. We get uh, full cooperation and uh, support from the Indian authorities here in India. And this is again a, a good opportunity to thank the Indian authorities for them being such good friends. And uh, we are going to, to continue to do what we did until now and to expand and uh, uh, to take the relations to higher heights. Absolutely, we should. Uh, I know your limitations, but I would like to take the opportunity of telling all our viewers that, that there has been the Narendra Modi government has truly charted a new course in the relationship uh, with Israel. And you saw the personal bonhomie and friendship between uh, between Benjamin Netanyahu and, and Narendra Modi. I think there are many people who are jealous of this relationship. And uh, I don't want to talk either about Iranian hand at this stage is premature, but but one thing we must say, and I had the great pleasure, Dr. Malka, when, when Narendra Modi was visiting your great country of interviewing Mr. Netanyahu, and he spoke very warmly to Republic at that time. Today, viewers, Israel is the second largest weapon supplier to India. Can you imagine the scale of this relationship? Defense imports have increased by 175% if you look at you know, 2015 to 2019. Homeland security, criminal matters, classified material, cybersecurity. The question is to Dr. Malka, who would be threatened by such a thriving relationship? Who would be threatened by such a thriving relationship? Yes, I think there may be some countries, some uh, uh, even non-state organizations that might be threatened and uh, don't really like uh, what is happening between Israel and India, uh, which can be, as you well mentioned, a shining example for the world, how two countries can collaborate and work together. Take, for instance, not only the security collaboration, but under this pandemic, how uh, scientists from both Israel and India, joint efforts, joint research on a rapid tests for COVID-19, how we share the techniques, practices, uh, advanced medical equipment between our countries, how much support we gave to each other, how much added value we bring to each other. Uh, I think uh, other countries can just see that and try to learn uh, how to collaborate and how can uh, two countries become so close and with relations that are built on mutual trust and mutual respect can thrive so much. Yes, I think uh, many uh, are envy and uh, Yes, see that, and uh, I think don't like it very much. Well, I would, I would also add one more thing, Dr. Malka, that, and for our viewers to know the way Israel is reaching out to the world. Uh, just a few days back, less than a week back, Israel opened its embassy in UAE, and that's a significant step for diplomatic ties with the country. It's the first such step. Uh, Israel and Turkey decided to restore ties in Central Asia in December. Now, what does this kind of an attack mean in this context? Because now India is also a big global player 
And I'm sure there are a lot of people who are seeing Israel's diplomatic reach out and realizing the long-term ramifications of a further deepening of a relationship in India. So my question to you is, Dr. Malka, this cannot be a localized incident. It must be seen in the global context of the threat yes, totally uh, you know, Israel's growing friendship with other countries poses to, to inimical interests. I totally agree with Yorna. I think that your analysis is very wise. Yes, uh, whatever you just mentioned, our efforts towards uh, uh, the end of war uh, to stabilize situation, to forge new friendships, support, mutual support. So all those that thrive, either if they are states or non-states, thrive to destabilization, see it as a threat. The ties that Israel now forged with the Gulf countries, as you mentioned, and without other countries in the area, are threatened to those that thrive for destabilization, because both Israel and India, in a much larger scale, are thriving for stabilization. Israel in our region and India in the world. India contributes so much to the world stabilization. India is a, a, a world a, a emerging power, is bringing so much a positive value to the stabilization of the world. Israel is bringing a value to the stabilization of our region. So all those that seek for destabilization see it as a threat. Yes, I totally agree with you. There's, there's one more point I want to mention, and, and Dr. Malka is, uh, I mean, uh, when I've had a great opportunity of meeting him, he's, he's uh, by the way, if he was, Dr. Malka has also been uh, chairman and, uh, and on the board of directors of the, of the famous Tel Aviv uh, Stock Exchange. He's been a member of the Finance and Budget Committee of TASC, so he's completely in the world of business. But more than that, he's also like all uh, Israelis, uh, you know, an ex-army uh, ex man. And therefore, he understands national security very well. I want to go back to the issue because I think all countries need to make a choice, Dr. Malka. And India also needs to make a choice. And everyone who, who considers countries who defend themselves aggressively, we are, we're all called rightists and right of center. I say that if you're on the right path, even if people call you right of center, that doesn't matter. My question to you is at a different level. I want to go back to the Iranian issue and you're a country facing threat. Just last week, the Iranian President Hassan Rouhani's chief of staff, Mohammad Vezi, said his country is willing and ready to defend itself. And he accused Israel of waging a psychological war. What is this accusation about? And do you think this blast or any you know, attack on Israel's uh, security interests is a response to uh, what is being spread about Israel carrying out a psychological war on Iran? What is this talk about a psychological war? Well, this is really something that we need to figure out. It's been a long time that many Israelis, like me, try to understand where come this grievance that Iran has against us. What did we do to them? Thousands of kilometers from them. We didn't. We never harmed them. We used to be such good friends, friends until 1979. Iranian exiles tell me that so many uh, systems and technology there in Iran, in water and agriculture, Israeli technology, so much added value we brought to them. What do they have with us? If just, for instance, let's, we would say that let's play a game. Let's put the arms down. Who will do that? We will do that. So we try to understand why is Iran uh, uh, considering us as their mortal enemy? What did we do to them? Suddenly they became the protesters, uh, the, the protectors of the Palestinians. We were there before. They only harm the Palestinians instead of urging them to come to, to, to negotiate and to come to peace, reasonable peace uh, uh, solution. They're urging them just as to fight and not to, to compromise, just to destabilize the area. What did we do to them? Yeah, I still, I mean, I don't know. Then why do they accuse you of carrying out a psychological war? Why, why, is, that, why is that point being made by, by, by people like Mahmoud Bazi and uh, Hassan Rouhani repeatedly against Israel? Because these well, are top they, officials uh, of, of Iran. They're talking well, the about new that, offensive yeah. options against you that they are looking at. And they are, you know, uh, you accuse them of seeking to build a nuclear bomb. They deny it. Uh, a, a point of concern, Dr. Malka, between Israel and Iran. How do you view the relationship and what's going on? Well, the stated aim of the Iranian uh, regime is the total annihilation of Israel. 
we, we don't threat them. We don't have any threats against Iran. We are just trying to protect ourselves, of course. We want to survive. We are not going to negotiate our existence. So given that, it's very obvious to see who is to blame. We only protect ourselves. We never, we never start any offense against anyone. We just, but we are going to be very decisive in protecting ourselves, our country, and our people. You should be. So if you want to begin with, start, how come the Iran regime has, has stated its aim, total annihilation of Israel? So who, who is to blame here? Well, there's no doubt on that. There's no doubt on that, that you're the target. But let me just say this, Dr. Malka, that I wish you well. I, I wish full safety to you. Uh, are you also asking some uh, investigators or some uh, people who are experts in counterterrorism to come in and investigate and work with uh, India's NIA on this, in this specific case? We heard something about that. Well, again, the, as I said, the, the, the investigation is ongoing, so we'll not get to details, but uh, whatever information, techniques, experience uh, we can share, of course, we do that. We do we did that without any yes. connection to this uh, specific attack, because, uh, yes, we collaborated in, we collaborate in counterterrorism. So whatever is needed, whatever support, whatever we can bring, any added value to the investigation, of course, uh, we'll do that. Well, Dr. Malka, it's always a pleasure speaking to you. And Thank I think so that we, the people of India and Israel, need to work together, not just the governments, but the people to people. And I think even in terms of media, there needs to be a new narrative that tells the story of countries which face the scourge of terrorism. Thank you very much, Dr. Malka. Pleasure. Thank you so much, Anna, for your kind words and for inviting me here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.